You ready? My name's John Ring and I've been building classic bikes for, since I was 15, which is quite a long time ago now because I'm in the 70s and I've built all the race bikes for Sammy Miller Museum and I've done for 20 years. So this, this particular bike is quite rare. As far as we know, it's the only Fruin, it's certainly it's the only one that's all assembled and uh, I built the engine up out of a pile of scrap which Sammy bought. And uh, it's quite unusual, it's a four-cylinder, two-stroke, 200cc. The barrels and heads are basically NSU quickly, and the rest of it is all, apart from the gearbox, handmade. The carburetors are Del Autos. This is about the third time we've had it running, and we'll gradually get in there with it. The four-cylinder Froom. We tested NSUs this morning, my Sports Max and the Max. He used NSU quickly barrels and heads while making this engine. What's quite unique about these, this was the first company in the world to use Nicosil barrels in production. That's like a chrome finish straight onto the alloy. John Ring come in, uh, John built the engine and um, what did you, how did you find these, John, when you put them, built the engine? They're, they're good. Uh, NSU quickly were one of the greatest protagonists of chrome plating boards there was, and they got it really right. Um, so this, this bike's basically got standard quickly barrels, the heads. Yeah, the casting's made from the standard quickly one and increase the compression ratio one atmosphere. So. Uh, everybody used Nicker seals today, but NSU were the first, probably 56 when the NSU, 55, 56 when the NSU quickly come out. So there you go, you got four nailed together. We're going to fire it up again. And um, John Ring is trying to get the carburetion sorted out, but um, we're getting a bit better. We've just discovered it's too weak low down, so after we give it a run, he's going to up the pilot jets, uh, see how that affects m maybe uh, richer it up on the needles. And unfortunately, he doesn't have any main jets, but it's on a 90 main jet at the present, which should be more than enough. So we've got to give it a crack and see what happens. So in first gear. The frame is unusual, it's a MV frame, 125 MV racer, and uh, probably went quicker with the original MV engine. It's four speed, four speed close box, Albion gearbox, a 74, which is not the most renowned gearbox, but it, it functions and works. Four speed here, gear change. It's got a coil ignition, Coil ignitions in there, partly. Battery powered 12 volt. Total loss ignition, there is no battery powered, no charging system, so you have to watch the battery for power. Runs on petrol oil, like the old fashioned did, the way, the way they did. It's 60 years old. It's a chap called Fruin, that's his name. He's Bert, Herbert Fruin. And uh, he built a, quite, quite a range of motorcycle racing engines in the late 50s, early, or very early 60s. Mostly uh, 
four strokes, which apparently went quite well. I've seen a few of them, not worked on them. The, apparently, the reason why we built this was that they, uh, him and his mates were having a drink in the pub on a Friday night, and after a moment of great enthusiasm, somebody said to him, why don't you build a single cylinder engine that could be bolted together, and you could go up to eight cylinders. So Bert Bynow was a bit sozzled and decided he'd do it. Unfortunately, enthusiasm is a lot easier than actually doing it. And he laid out plans for a force or a twin cylinder, which no one's seen, a four cylinder, this one here, and um, various other engines up to a, a V8, which he never got to. The cylinders on this one, I said, are basically an SU quickly, but he started off with putting all his two-stroke engines made with Italian engines, uh, a DEM, D-E-M-N, and but they weren't satisfactory, so he moved over to these. Well, the the bike has basically got uh, it's been built into an MV Augusta 125 frame. The reason he did that is because they had a, a very wide spance here, so that it would accommodate the engine. It's got racing brakes from the 50s. It hasn't actually been altered a lot at all, which is surprising. So um, good old MV. And they were renowned for handling well, but we've not been able to put the frame and the brakes and everything to any form of test yet until perhaps we get the engine running better. It, it, it runs tolerably, but it's only been run three times. When Burke got this idea out of the pub, he realised that he didn't have the machining facilities that were necessary to build these bikes. But what he was good at was producing drawings and, car and drawings for castings, etc. So he came up with a plan whereby he would have castings manufactured and then sell all the castings as a kit of parts for people to build them themselves. Unfortunately, back in 1960, the range of machine tooling was nowhere near as good as what we'd all hoped for for today. And he had no control over what people did with it. And the experience was that the people who bought the castings and were still trying to find out how many sets were made, obviously didn't have the ability or the machine tools to produce it. And therefore found it a hell of a job to put together. And we've seen three of these. This is the only one that's complete. We found another engine, an earlier version in the Isle of Man. And I think poor old Bert got absolutely fed up with it in the end, that um, you know people were not manufacturing things to his uh, standards. So they're very, very rare. And we've never seen any evidence of one actually being raced or on a track or anything else. The, uh, it's interesting that this, these carburetors are Del Autos and um, they're 60 years old and I've got quite a good rapport with Del Autos and they're very helpful and uh, I, uh, when I spoke to them about it they went oh <laughs> well they are 60 years old so we haven't got many spares with them but they've come up with a fair bit and they're, they're very helpful and that's what we're working on now because Bert never got round to uh, trying to set it up properly and that's it Bert's gone now unfortunately, and, uh, but I've seen some of his other engines, the four-stroke engines, Fruins, and they're quite good. So, yeah, I'd have liked to have met him, really. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to see more like it, please click the subscribe button here on the bottom left-hand side of this video. To see more videos we think you'll like, please click on the previews on the right-hand side. Thank you for supporting the Classic Motorcycle Channel.